Happy Halloween, just not for the Bears as they fall 29-9 to to the Arizona Cardinals. I'm Harrison Graham, a.k.a. Dwight Schrute, as the big question coming into this game was, could the Bears, with their back against the wall, a lot of drama, a lot of outside noise, head coach who's under a lot of fire from the fan base and the media, could they respond after that heartbreaking loss in Washington last week? And the answer was a resounding no. They could not respond from what happened a week ago. Cardinals destroy the Bears 29-9. to um, There's a lot to get to from this game, but I think more big picture of like, what are you doing with this coach at this point? I mean, it just feels like a waste of time. Caleb Williams actually started good on the first drive, but then he just was all over the map afterwards. The accuracy continues to be hit and miss. Um, you're dropping passes when they do hit you. Keenan Allen dropped one. Rome dropped one, although Rome had a pretty good game overall. And for the first time all year, the defense just folded on multiple occasions, and we'll talk about that as well. But we do got to get to the, the question of the show, the pen comment on today's show. Is it time? Should the Bears fire head coach Matt Eberflus? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. You guys sound off in the comments below. If you're typing in for no, I think you're either Eberflus's family member or you're a fan of the Vikings, Lions, or Packers. It's over. It's over. It felt like it was starting to be over the way last week ended, the way Flus failed to take accountability on numerous occasions. He's actually taken some after today, but like, what choice does he have? Um, you, you just you can't play like this. And it felt like the team quit today. At the end of the first half, it was 14-9. to nine. You hadn't played that well, but you get to the locker room down five, getting the ball, you're right in the game. And the Cardinals, with 12 seconds left at their own 47 on third and five, weirdly hand the ball off because I jokingly said to my producer, Colin, like, oh, they're right, on the, they're right in Hail Mary range. Here we go. They'll probably try to throw here, get a first down, and if they're not in field goal range, they'll throw a Hail Mary. They hand the ball off to third-string running back Amari DiMercato, and he goes untouched for a 53-yard touchdown. Arizona was comfortable running that game into the locker room right, or settling for a Hail Mary attempt. And he goes untouched for a 53-yard touchdown to take it to halftime. I don't think I've ever seen it before. Um, Flus said on the telecast at the halftime little sideline interview thing, he said it after the game just now as well, that he called a pass blitz there, could have made a better call. I, I just like – I'm tired of what should be happening. I, I want something to happen. And Matt Eberflus – he just doesn't have the answers, and I've said it. He can be my defensive coordinator any day of the week. Not for this team, obviously, because he, he's not going to take a demotion. But, like, there will be teams interested in him as a D.C., but his head coaching days are over. He's now 0-18 on the road in Sunday games. He's won three road games, but none of them are on Sunday, weirdly enough. Regardless, 3-18 and on the road. He doesn't beat teams who are above 500. He... I mean, the, his defense, without Montez Sweat today, the 13-game streak of allowing 21 points or less, that ended. So, like, Montez Sweat, just one guy is keeping this whole thing together. And don't say the secondary is banged up. That's been the case for weeks. And you just got run over by Arizona. I, I mean, it's just a joke. Like, last week was heartbreaking, was devastating. I went nuclear. Today, it's just like, it's just kind of numb, and it's, got, it's clarity, to be honest. It's like, we, we don't have to pretend anymore. Like, we don't have to pretend with this. Like, it, this, 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 this ain't it. <laughs> I mean, I, oh, with the first year. Yeah, okay, take the first year out of it. Who cares? How many games has he blown? He can't win on the road. I mean, Arizona's an average team. They're, they're average, and you had no chance today. I get you got some backup linemen in there. I mean... <laughs> Maybe the most egregious thing he did is last week after getting criticized by me and others for not taking timeouts um, at the end of the game to make sure you, you've got everything set up, he's taking timeouts with 7.40 left down 29-9 to 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 try and get the ball back. 29-9, to 7.40 left. It, I, I literally said live, I was like, is he trolling us? I mean, we have to be in a simulation right now. Like, the, the guy just has no clue about any of it. 
about any of it. And it, it's just sick, and it's it, it's over. And I got more thoughts too because I think you got to bring Ryan Poles into the discussion a little bit as well. You got to talk about the future because this this thing's going nowhere. It's going nowhere. You're four and four, but you're the worst four and four team I've ever seen. I mean, have you beat the worst four teams in football? Next week, maybe the five worst if you beat New England. You beat the Panthers, the Jags, the Titans. Rams are a decent team, but they were completely decimated when you played them. You've beaten nobody worth the shit. Nobody. It's just, it's, it's over, man. And I think we all know it's over. More to discuss when it comes to the head coach and the team as a whole, but do have to get a word in from our sponsor, Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS. Join the 10 million users and counting for those who play prize picks in North America. Daily fantasy made easy. The way is simp- the way to play is simple. Uh, you pick two or more players in your lineup. It's got to be two players on different teams. doesn't matter the sport. You can cross over the sport. And you just choose more or less based on the prize picks stat projections. I missed on my uh, entry today uh, as I had Kyler and Caleb more than on their rushing uh, yards, but uh, that's okay. We'll get back on the saddle here because guess what? When I used code CLNS and played for five dollars initially, I got a fifty dollar bonus. That's the deal. Prize Picks is running right now, so take advantage. Link and promo code are in the comments and in the description of this video. Uh, play Prize Picks today, and uh, if you're sick of uh, the Bears, uh, utilize other players because uh, maybe it'll make it a little bit more fun. PrizePicks.com/CLNS. Use the code CLNS. I think maybe the craziest part about today is with Flus using those timeouts, they have the ball back late in that game. I mean, a minute, a minute and a half left. And Caleb, who got sacked six times today, probably should have been double digits with, you know, Larry Borm, Jake Curran, you know, ends up getting in there late at left tackle. Just guys just getting killed. There was a fourth and 11 in the fourth quarter where the Cardinals brought four, and I don't think a single one of them was blocked. And – you still have Caleb in there in the final minute. He tweaked his ankle on the last play of the game. I mean, the game is over. It's beyond over. It was over 30 minutes earlier. Why is he in the game? Like, the only – there's no value in those reps. If you watch the last couple of drives, Caleb's just dumping it off to Swift. I, I mean, that's not valuable. There's no value in that. And Flus is like, yeah, and, and, you know, anything can happen there. That's what he said after the game. It's like, dude – Do you have any feel at all? If he is even slightly injured, I mean, that is just beyond malpractice. And look, Caleb's got issues. He's missing throws. The accuracy has been all over the place. You know, I'm pretty disappointed in how he's played out of the bye week. I give him credit last week for how he finished in the fourth quarter, giving your chance, uh, a team a chance to win. But after a good start in the opening drive today, he wasn't that good. It, it, It has to be said now, he's running for his life. Keenan's dropping balls. Rome dropped the ball, um, you know, in competitive one-on-one situations on some back shoulder throws. Uh, a couple guys didn't make plays. Like, he needs more help, but he's got to play better too. I, I don't want to immune him from any of this, but this thing is just atrocious right now. It's just atrocious. I mean, I get the competition wasn't that tough, but my eyes tell me you had your young quarterback in a groove heading into the bye week, and just all of a sudden it's just gone. It's, it's all lost. Like, <laughs> it's all gone. Like, what this coaching staff just – and Shane Waldron, can you call something – can you call some crossing routes every once in a while? Like, everything feels like a stagnant route. Like, there was one play where Cole Komet is on the sideline seven yards downfield, and there's another guy, like, just five yards beyond him at the sideline. What is that route concept? Like, maybe some kind of flood concept, but there's got to be more spacing there. Like, you're able to defend guy, two guys with one guy in that situation. And speaking of Cole Komet, zero targets in this game. How is that even possible? Caleb threw it 41 times and was sacked six times and scrambled once. 48 dropbacks, zero targets for Cole Komet. You're, just, you're targeting Keenan Allen 10 times in this game. I got news, guys. Keenan Allen ain't close to the same player. Now, part of it is the Bears don't know how to utilize him. They're using him on vertical plays. It's like he's never been a burner. He's a short area quickness guy. So you're not calling good plays. Your quarterback's missing throws. Your O-line can't block. Your receivers are dropping passes. And your personnel utilization makes no sense whatsoever. Other than that, you're pretty good. I mean, what a shit show. What a shit show. 
And I, I got to wonder just real quick, and I'll probably expand on this tomorrow. Do you tr- try to trade Keenan Allen before Tuesday? Because your season's probably done. I mean, I know you're 4-0, but like, or 4-4, four four, but this thing. Like Keenan, one-year you know, rental type of deal. You brought him in to try and help your young quarterback. Like he's okay, but he's nowhere near what he was. Do you just trade him and, and get something for him? Like I, I would consider that. Give Tyler Scott some looks in the second half of this season because, I mean, would Keenan even want to come back next year? I mean, let's be honest. Like – I don't think he'd si- he'd sign up to come back here. So you might as well just trade him and see if you can get something for him. Uh, saw something where the Chiefs are still interested in more receiver help. Maybe you can trade him to them for a day three pick. Grade the Bears' performance today, A, B, C, D, or F. I mean, I think considering everything, considering the noise coming into this game, you could say this was the worst showing of Flus's coaching career. And I, I just – you got to fire the coach. It's it's. A, I know they've never fired a coach midseason. I wouldn't bet on them doing it. But what are you keeping them for? Like you made a mistake by not pairing Caleb Williams with the different coach this off season. Don't double down and run out the string. Just get him out of here. Promote somebody that's not named Shane Waldron and finish it that way. Maybe it jump starts the team. I don't know. But I mean, the team just folded today. Business decisions were being made by the defense. O line is just not even touching people. It's it's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. Appreciate everybody who's hung with us all year, especially the last couple of weeks. It's not easy. We're almost at one hundred thousand and or one hundred and seven thousand subscribers. Myself, producer Colin, the whole chat sports team appreciates all of our subscribers and uh, appreciates any new ones that come on board. One day, subbing for Bears Dubs will actually happen. But uh, join the movement here, and uh, I'll be here every day. I'll show up to work unlike the bears.